Hey guys, welcome to part eight of mean stack front to back. In the last video, we created our register functionality. We're now able to register through our Angular 2 app. And now we're going to work on the login. Okay, so we already have the login for um, the login component created. So let's go to our Angular app, source, app, components, and then login. And let's go ahead and open up both the component TS as well as the HTML. Okay, so I'm just going to paste the form in here. This is just plain HTML. We're just going to add a couple things to it. All right, so first thing we're going to do is in the form tag, we need a submit event. Okay, so we're going to say submit, and then we're going to send that to on login submit. And then we have our username and password. We're going to um, link these two properties in our component, so we're going to need ng model. So we'll say ng model equals username. And we also have to have a name attribute with the same value. Okay, we also want to do that for password. Okay, so that's password and then name password. Okay, and that should be all we need to do here. So let's save that. The form should show up. Good. Um, now we're going to go back to the component.ts file. And let's add the username and password as component properties. Okay, so we'll say username string and password string. Okay, and then we're going to want to um, actually let's, let's just add that function the on login submit. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. We'll just test this out. Okay, actually, let's test it out by displaying the username. Okay, remember we have the ng model linking to this username property, which we can access with this dot username. So let's make sure that that's saved, and then we'll go ahead and try that out. Let's reload. And if we go ahead and let's just say test and username, and we get test down here. Okay, so that function is hooked up. Um, now, when we submit it, we want to create an object for called user, and let's set username to this dot username, and then password to this dot password. Okay. Now what we want to do is take this, this user object and submit it through our auth service to the backend authenticate route. So we have to bring in our auth service. So let's go to the top here and we'll say import auth service. Actually that should be an uppercase. And that's going to be from, we want to go out twice and then into services and then auth.service. Okay, and we need to inject that as a dependency. So private auth service and we'll set that to auth service. Okay. And while we're at it, we might as well bring in the other stuff we need to as well. We need the router So that we can redirect. So that's going to be from Angular slash router. And then, oh, what's going on here? Okay. And then we also want to bring in the flash messaging. So that's going to be flash message service Angular 2 dash flash messages and we have to inject those as well so let's put these on separate lines just to make it look a little neater so this will be um, router and let's say flash 
message, set that to flash message service. Okay, so now we're injecting all the stuff we need to inject. Um, and then we're going to call an auth service. So let's do that right below this where we created the user. We're going to do this dot auth service dot and we're going to call this um, no wait, we want to call authenticate authenticate user. Okay, that'll get passed in the user and it's going to return an observable so we want to subscribe. Okay, and then when we subscribe, we're going to get some data back. And we'll set that to a code block. Okay, I'm going to just leave it like this for now. And we want to create this authenticate user. So let's save this. And then we'll go into our service, our auth service. Authenticate user. That's going to be passed in the user object. Okay. And now we need to make a post request to, uh, to authenticate. So just like we did up here, actually, let me just, I'm just going to copy this. Okay, so we have our headers. We're saying we want to use the content type JSON, and then we're making a post request, except we want to make this to authenticate. Slash authenticate. And we're sending the user along, so that's fine. And the rest of this is fine. So basically, it's the same thing, except we just changed the endpoint. Okay, and then remember, when we, when we do the authenticate, it's going to return a success, and it's going to return, um, if it's successful, it's going to return the token for us to store, and it's also going to return the user info. Okay, so once we make this request, we're going to want to store that. So let's go back to our login component, and that's what should be in the data right here. So right now what I'm going to do is just console log that data just to see what it gives us. All right, so let's save that. Uh, let's see, do I have any errors here? What's that? Um, no exported member flash message service. Let's see, why am I getting that? Oh, it's messages. That should have an S. And then also right here. All right. So let's save that. And let's go back to our login page. And I'm just going to reload it. And let's see what happens uh, if we send just anything. Okay, so look down here and we get back an object, success false, user not found, which is exactly what we should get. Now let's use a user that's there but the wrong password. Okay, now down here you can see we get wrong password. Now let's do the right password. And if we look down here, we get success true, we get our long token, and we get our user object. So what we want to do is store this, and we're going to use local storage. So let's go back to our login component. And let's see, we're going to test that data. We're going to say if data.success, okay, and let's do an else. So if success, let's do the, the, the error first, if it doesn't succeed then we just want to send uh, a flash message so we can say this dot flash message dot show and let's pass in the actual message that comes back from the server so data dot message and then we can add our options and we're going to add a CSS class and set that to alert danger okay and then we'll also set the timeout and we'll set that to five seconds all right let me just put these on a separate line okay and then let's see after that that ends right there we want to just redirect so we'll say this dot 
router dot navigate and here we're gonna go to just the login all right so let's go ahead and try that we'll save and log in user not found we do Brad and the wrong password we get wrong password okay so we don't even have to create those messages we're sending it right from the server now if it's successful uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have an authentication an auth service function called store user data so let's call that this dot auth service dot store user data okay and then we're going to pass in data dot token and data dot user so the response we're getting and then we're simply going to send a message and redirect so let's copy this and put that right there okay except this is going to be um, let's see do I want to send no we don't want to send that let's uh let's just say you are now logged in and we'll change this to alert success and we want to change this to dashboard all right so let's save that and then we'll create the store user data so we'll go back to our service okay so that's going to get in a token as well as user and then what we want to do is save it in local storage so we can say local storage um, dot set item and then this takes in a key and then the value now for the key we're going to use ID underscore token now the reason I'm using this is because when when we use angular JWT to uh, to validate the token it, it looks for this path automatically within local storage um, there is a way you can change it but I'm just going to keep it at ID token okay so that's why I'm using that and not just token uh, but then we just want to pass in the token that comes in from here so we're saving that in local storage and then we want to save the user as well set item and we're gonna set user and let's set that uh, we're actually gonna say JSON dot stringify user now the reason we're doing this is because local storage can only store strings it can't store an object so what we have to do is make it into a string before we enter it and then when we get it back we can parse it back to JSON so we can use it alright hopefully that makes sense um, and then what we'll do is we're gonna set this and this value okay so we can say this dot auth token equals token and this dot user equals user okay so now let's go ahead and make sure everything's saved and we're going to try to log in and it should get stored in local storage so let's say prad and log in takes us to the dashboard tells us we're logged in and then if we go and click on the application tab you'll see that we have in local storage if you click down right here we have the ID token and we have the user okay we can access this user information uh, whenever we want so what I want to do now is create a log out link so that we can clear this stuff out and it will log us out alright and then in the next video after that we will um, implement the check so that we can uh, validate the token with angular JWT and we'll also do the access control because right now anyone can go to dashboard or the profile um, so we'll do that too uh, but let's create the logout so in the service let's go down here and let's say logout okay so logout what we're gonna do is we're gonna first of all set the local auth token value to null we're gonna set 
this dot user to null and we're going to clear local storage dot clear okay so that'll clear it out let's save that and then we need a logout link up here so we're going to go to our nav bar let's see nav bar html and let's go ahead and copy one of these now right now all the links are going to show at all times but when we do our auth guard um, we'll be able to hide you know hide the logout if they're not logged in and hide the register login if they are logged in okay so let's paste that in and let's change this to logout okay and then uh, we're gonna have this go actually you know what we're gonna do is it's not gonna go anywhere we're gonna create um, uh, an event and then we'll put the logout event inside of our navbar component so let's get rid of this router link and I'm just gonna say href to nowhere okay and then we'll add a click event and let's set that whoops let's set that to on logout click all right um, and let's see we don't need this because there, it's not going to be active Okay, so we'll save that and then let's go in navbar component ts and say on logout click and we're going to need our auth service and messaging so I'm just going to copy from uh, let's say login I'm just going to copy all these imports and put that in the navbar Okay, we also need to inject them all, so let's grab those as well. Everything in the constructor. Okay, we'll put that here. And in now in the on logout click, we're gonna say this dot auth service um, dot logout. And it's not an observable, it's not returning anything, so we can just do it like that. And then the message. This dot flash message dot show. And let's just say you are logged out. Set that to alert success. And we'll set timeout to three seconds. Okay, and then we just want to redirect. And let's see, this is going to go to the login page. And then we also just want to return false. All right, let's save that. And let's try it out. We'll reload and let's click log out. You are now logged out. And if we go to application, local storage, there's nothing there. Good. All right, so in the next video, we're going to implement Angular 2 JWT. We're going to create the profile page and we're going to send um, we're going to send a request to the profile route, which is restricted. So we'll have to uh, send along the token as well. Alright, so that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next.